Hi, welcome back to Repair Law Most for Profit. In this video, behind us, I have a brand new Mountfield S481 PD lawnmower. This has kindly been sent to me by Mountfield for me to review. We're going to do two videos on this actual lawnmower. The first video, which is this one, we're going to unbox this lawnmower. I'm going to show you how to assemble it. Obviously, this is still new and in a box the way any customer would receive this lawnmower so I'm going to go through the whole process of unboxing it and setting it up and assembling it right until the point where we actually pull the pull cord and start this lawnmower up. I'm also going to put a second video on which I'll link to somewhere through this video we actually take this lawnmower out onto some wasteland and we actually do a full review of this. So this video is going to be an assembly video of the Mountfield S481 PD lawnmower which is one of Mountfield's best selling lawnmowers and it's got a PD which is a power drive model so I'm going to show you how to assemble this, set it up and we're going to go right through the process of unboxing it right to the point where the lawnmower starts up and hopefully runs as it should. Right so the first thing we obviously need to do is we need to unbox this lawnmower so I'm just going to take a knife we're carefully just going to open this up and of course don't forget I've never done this before so I'm opening this as you will find it if you were to purchase this lawnmower and there is actually a link in the video description to the Mountfield website where you can buy this lawnmower as well so take a look in the description if you watch the full video on the review video and you think this looks like a good lawnmower so as many of you know I've had this Mountfield SP470 since I bought my first house around 20 years ago and this has been a fantastic lawnmower and if you've been a subscriber to the channel you probably remember at one point I actually sold this lawnmower and then I accidentally bought it back off somebody without knowing it was my old lawnmower. So I'm going to link in the top right hand corner to a playlist of all the videos related to Mountfield and Briggs and Stratton engines in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. So as you can see this is well wrapped which is nice to see. Got a lot of bubble wrap that you can play with. David's behind my camera today doing mobile camera work. So the first thing we can do which is really easy. Oh look at that mostly already assembled as well is a nice new grass box. It's so strange to see new parts on a lawnmower coming out of the box. So we'll take that out of the box. We've got some fuel st stabiliser here which has actually been supplied from Mountfield. So that's nice. Nice uh, little addition little thing I've got there. We've got some more bubble wrap on here so we'll just take that off there. Put that to one side. It's all nicely packaged up. We have a mulching plug as well that's all in good condition as well so we'll take that out I'm going to put all these parts on the bubble wrap for now and I want to see exactly how difficult it is to unbox because a lot of people especially a lot of older people might worry that if they buy a new lawnmower they might not be able to get this out of the box so let's just see how difficult it actually is the handle looks like it's been fully assembled so we'll take this off and I'll just show you exactly how it comes in the box. So here we are, this is what you will receive and this is a lovely looking lawnmower. This is an ST170 overhead valve engine with 166 cc's of power. We'll see what we've got in the box. Look at this mate, you can even get the oil. Look at that, we've got some Steger oil, look, four stroke oil, so you can have that. Thank you. We've got a box here, what's that? Is this just packaging yet? We'll just move that as well. Um, basically what we need to do is get this whole lawnmower out of the box now. We've got a nice manual, full booklet manual, which is um, nice to see as well. So obviously we've got this in the box now and we've just been having a chat, me and David, haven't we? And we think the best way to get this out of the box, if we like to avoid any, any heavy lifting where possible, is just to slit the box. We're going to slit the box down this side and down here as well. I'm going to spin this round and we're going to reverse this lawnmower out of this box. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a knife and I'm going to slit this box down here. See, just down there, that slits quite easily actually. We'll do the same at the other side as well. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to avoid any heavy lifting at all because there'll be plenty of people that don't want to lift anything heavy out of a box. But to be fair, the box has been really easy to split. And I'm hoping we can just kind of reverse this one more out of the box here some work to do on the handle to attach this most of this lawnmower looks like it's going to be fully assembled and of course when you're young when you see a big box the first thing you want to do is get in it so first impressions on getting this out of the box is absolutely fantastic it looks really really nice indeed of course you might think well yeah of course it does it's brand new but it does actually look really nice quality does this lovely colour as well and 
just if you were purchasing this yourself I think the retail price of this is around £450 but um, it's a lovely looking lawnmower and I'm quite impressed with how assembled it already is I was expecting to kind of have to connect all these parts up with a new lawnmower screw all these things together but the main part of the assembly is done now it would be very easy for me to just unfold that handle and kind of put it together I should be able to work out how to do that but as an old friend of mine once said to me if all else fails follow the instructions so I'm going to do exactly what any customer would do who's never owned a petrol lawnmower we're going to open up the assembly guide and we're going to follow that to the letter and we'll see exactly how this lawnmower goes together but overall perception of getting this out of the box is fantastic not too bad to get out of the box no heavy lifting most of it's assembled and the product looks fantastic as well right mister you can get the instructions out can't you you like yeah. doing that don't you go on then see what we can find in there okay so we found some interesting things here in that package that David just opened, we've actually got the operator's manual for this pedestrian control lawnmower. We've actually got your registration card. We've got the service ticket here as well, which gives you the details you'll need to know to order any parts. We've also got a full manual on the engine here, which is great as well. But one thing that wasn't together with these four parts in the plastic packaging was this, which is the first thing I'm going to need, which is final assembly instructions. Where did you find that? It's tucked under the handle of the rest box. You here. found that under there, didn't you? So yeah. if I was to say put that somewhere else and try and assemble this lawnmower, I could have easily missed that, couldn't I? Yeah. So it might be an idea to put the final assembly instructions in with the manuals rather than putting them separately packaged on top of that grass box. What do you think? Yeah. Right, so I've just had a look at all these little instruction books that have come with it. Now this is a, a final assembly instruction sheet, but this is just a generic, as it says there, this is just a generic instruction sheet to give you a guidance and this doesn't actually directly relate to the lawnmower we have bought but it does come with a generic sheet there this here this is the operator's manual this is for the engine as well this here although nothing's in English this is um, your certificate here and this contains all the details you'll need if you need to order any parts and I think if I'm right in saying I think you can go on the service link website and that's Mountfield's um, kind of service centre and you can look at things on there that you might need to order but you will need these details here and these details on here say so this is an MP1 504 SQ now the reason for having this separate certificate is so that when you want any parts you don't always have to go to the back of the lawnmower and look at the certificate and write everything down that's on it you can walk into your local mower dealer you can show them the certificate they should be able to go on the relevant website which I think is service link and order any parts this has got a five year extended warranty with it which looks like it will be valid if you have it serviced four times out of the first five years and then we've got here we've got the operator's manual but I don't have anything that directly refers at the moment to connecting these handles up Although we have some generic instructions of how to assemble, it appears that what we need to do is just take these handles off, unfold everything and put them back on. So looking through these boxes, there's nothing I can find easily that shows you how to assemble a handle. So I'm going to apply some common sense and we'll put these handles together. So you can see these handles, we've just lifted that one up slightly, oh they're just loose. This one's connected to the main body, the lawnmower, the lower handle and the upper one is still loose. So I'm going to take that off. I'm going to put that on a sheet here just to stop it getting scratched. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift off this top handle here, just making sure not to catch anything. And it's all in one piece, everything's connected which is great and I have previously said that most of this is assembled which is fantastic. So I'm going to put that there and we're just going to drop that on the floor just to make sure it doesn't get marked. The next thing I want to do is connect this lower handle, you can see you've got these great quick release handles which are fantastic, much better than winding things out. But what I want to do, there's a little notch here and this notch needs to go around this side here and it needs to fit in any of these holes and you can put these in the different holes depending on sort of how tall you are and how high up you like the handle to be so if you find it's a bit high just lift it into the top one and it will uh, lower the actual angle of this handle as well so I'm going to lift that up, I'm going to back these off like this as far as I dare without them falling off like that and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten them up maybe one full turn I'm going to lift the handle up, I'm going to put this little notch here through the hole here, you can see just there put it in one of those, I'll probably put it in the centre one for now just to see what it's like or maybe one of the lower ones and then we'll tighten that back up and we'll fit this top handle okay so what I've done here is I've just backed off these locking nuts here as far as I can and then turning them back one full turn so 
I've got a little bit of movement and I can get this actual little notch round from this side without scratching everything as well. So I should be able to flip that over now. And I want to do this without marking anything as well. I should just be able to lift that up there. I should be able to choose a hole. I'm going to choose the centre hole there. You can see there, if you just left that like that, how it would all be slack. I'm going to do the same thing at the other side. I've got both of these in the centre holes to start with. I'm going to tighten these back up, just finger tight. This one here, I'm going to do this with these parts open as well, just so I can still lock them off when I've got them back. So let's tighten that up, make sure everything's nice and in line, there's a little bracket here, make sure everything runs nice and in line, along with the handle as well. We'll get everything exactly where we want it before we lock this back up. So once you've finished kind of doing these finger tight like this, you get them as tight as you can. Leave these parts pointing outwards here like you can see there, and you just pull these, and you can see how everything snaps shut. And you can tell it's right if you try and lift it up and down a bit, nothing wobbles, nothing moves about, you'll get a little bit of play. You could maybe tighten them up a little bit more, but just tighten them up finger tight, and then clamp these handles shut and that's the lower part of this handle assembled. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put this top part of the handle on here. You can see the separate bit that we took off. This bit here has to go on here like this. So to do this I'm going to need to remove these two quick release levers here. So we'll do that now. We'll just take the end off. It's all connected in one handy piece which is nice so that the washer doesn't drop off. We'll take that off that side. We'll do the same with this side. It couldn't be any easier really. This is only a kind of one thing to put back on each side and then carefully just want to place this handle over the top here. You can see it's actually got a little notch in here, a little cut out section. We're going to put that over the top there and we're going to put these clamps back in position. So I've just put one side on, all I've got to do is tighten that back up and clamp this down. I've actually put this handle here, this quick release handle, pointing downwards because we've got to put the pull cord in here and with this the other way around, it's very near the pull cord so I can only kind of presume it goes that way around. We're going to do exactly the same at the other side. You've got to be very careful at this point that you don't catch these cables here. There's actually a cable tiny at the bottom I'm going to show you in just a minute. We'll just put this part back on first. So. We're going to put everything back through here and just tighten that back up as well, exactly the same as I did on the other side off camera. Just be real careful not to cross thread everything like that. I'm going to open this up, now I've got that started and tighten it as far as I can tighten it. Just finger tight is fine, just make sure everything's nice and lined up and you get everything where you want that, just clamp this down like that. So the best way I've found to do this is make sure the handle's pointing the way you want it to clamp and open it up like that and you get everything where you want as tight as you can kind of get it so you know it's not going to slip. Another way to tighten it is to kind of hold this threaded part and maybe go around again like that. That seems easier than actually screwing this part. Turn it around to where you, the opposite side of where you want it and then you can just pull like this and you don't want it too tight like that's too tight I can't do that so I'm going to back that off a little bit but you want it to clip and clamp together really nice and securely like this and then you know you're not going to have any problems and this lawnmower is going to be nice and easy to manoeuvre around in your garden. So we've got the whole handle assembled there. Hopefully I've not missed anything in the uh, assembly guide and I've just not skipped a step. I did have a good look through there. Things to check, make sure that this pin is through here as well. Mine's gone through the centre. I'm presuming, and I'm only presuming, you can move this around for different height settings as I said earlier. But I've put that in the centre and the height, it looks a little bit high for me, but I'm only quite small. You must make sure that these are locked through here. You can see on this side as well, how it's locked through and it's actually pushed through this little part here. Those must be locked into position. All these handles clamp down nice and tight like this. And they're all secure. You want everything tight, so when you move the whole thing about, everything moves about nice and easily. So the next thing we need to do is we need to work out how to get this machine started. We're going to need to put some oil and some fuel in this. So I'm going to refer back to the manual for this and see exactly what it says. And we'll take a look at these stickers as well. So while there's no actual oil or fuel in this mower, I'm actually going to tip this lawnmower on its side. Now you shouldn't ever do this if you've got um, any oil or any fuel in the mower. But I want to show you the underside of this. And it's obviously not going to cause a problem because there's no actual fluids in this lawnmower. So before we go any further, I want to show you the underside of this lawnmower just so you can have a really good look nothing can start obviously there's no fuel in it 
and the blade you got your blade adapter and you've got this mechanism under here which I'll have a look at and we'll have a look on the review video as well of exactly what that does um, obviously all nice and tidy it's brand new you've got the self drive box on here and you've got this side discharge flap here as well which should pull up that's on a spring loaded mechanism so that's the underside of this lawnmower so this lawnmower has actually got an adjustment on here which runs all the way up here and I think it runs to the top which it does yeah the self drive cable so if your self drive was to stop working because the cable stretched you have actually got an adjustment on this lawnmower which you don't get on some of the cheaper ones so when I say cheap ones I'm not specifying Mountfield I'm just saying a generic cheap lawnmower the petrol engine doesn't always have the cable adjustments on but this one does which is a nice feature because you don't want your self driving not working in a few years just because the cable stretched but the part I want to show you this comes with a little cable tidy here if you make sure all the cables are nice and clear all the way down the handle you can actually put this over the top clamp the cables and kind of move them out of the way a little bit just to keep things nice and tidy like that and that's just something I like to do so once you've done that you're saving catching all the cables in the handles and everything like that so looking at this we've got a handy warning sticker that tells us there's no oil in the machine it actually says here on this actual thing here if I can find English no oil is in the engine fill up and check the oil level before starting the machine for the first time now that's not a great place to put that actual warning label because that is actually for the petrol and not the oil and this actually specifies there's no oil in the engine it doesn't mention fuel it says fill up and check the oil level before starting for the first time as you can see there so I wonder how many people have got this lawnmower we've never had a petrol lawnmower before maybe we've got the first home taking this part off here seeing the oil warning actual warning thing they've printed and it's actually on the petrol part there this is actually the oil dipstick here and this is the one that has no oil in it so that's a little bit confusing that for me wants to go around there when this has been shipped that would be much better if you had something hanging around there I can only imagine that someone's tipped in all the oil that comes with it in there and then wondered why it doesn't work so that's something I would suggest once chasing up and just uh, mending so let's see if we can get this oil dipstick out of here and let's see if no oil comes with this lawnmower yeah this this actual engine oil dipstick is dry you can see here there's nothing hardly left on that at all some have been in it and taken out by the look and I know that these engines take half a litre of oil and I can't find anything in the instruction book so far that actually says to put half a litre of oil in it I've looked in here and there is actually a section on oil it tells you which oil to use which is SAE 30 but it doesn't actually give me how much you need to use but Steger have supplied us with some four stroke oil the correct oil for these lawnmowers is SAE 30 oil and I know that these lawnmowers take half a litre of oil and this container is actually 0.6 of a litre so you've got enough to actually get you started and a little bit to top up for the uh, upcoming years hopefully so I'm going to put half a litre of oil in this lawnmower and I'm actually going to put that where the oil goes which is here and not here so I'm going to put half a litre in as I've said I'm just going to show you this engine oil dipstick here there's two little indentations here as long as the oil is anywhere between these two indentations you've got enough in and not too much so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to make sure I caution on the side of not putting enough on just so I can top this up as obviously it's a little bit easier to add more than it is actually to take the oil out so I'm going to tip most of this oil in there's some small indentations there's like a window you can see in here I'm going to tip all this in I'm going to leave to the bottom indentation that you can see there just in the centre I'm going to leave that actually in the tub this is very full it's right full to the top so be careful when you're unscrewing that always use a funnel as well you don't want all this oil's draining down the side of a brand new lawnmower or any lawnmower for that matter so we'll just slowly fill this up and we'll just keep stopping as well just checking how much we've got left in this bottle here there's about two indentations left so I'm going to go a little bit more what we'll do is we'll leave that for a minute or so just to make sure all the oil has drained down into the bottom here make sure everything's gone in exactly where we want it and I'm going to show you how to check the oil level as well so left that to settle for a little bit we're going to put this in some of these dipsticks tell you whether to thread these in to the bottom to check and some of them don't but I'm going to put this right in and actually screw this on like this here and I'm going to take this out again here I'm going to have a look at that 
and you can probably just about make out on the video camera that that mark is just up to the top mark there and I don't want any more in than that so I'm happy that I've got enough oil in there and there's actually um, just a little bit over one indentation left on there so I've certainly not got too much in so I have a little bit of fuel here I know it's good fuel make sure we put that in as well I'm just going to drop a little bit in there I'm not going to use the fuel stabiliser at this point because that's designed to put in your lawnmower if you're leaving the lawnmower over winter so we'll put a good amount in there and give it a fair chance of starting up as well as I said always use a funnel keep everything nice and tidy if you get any fuel or any oil on the deck wipe it off straight away as well and just protect your deck so we'll get that the right way around put that one in there and that's the fuel added so the reason I wanted to look underneath this lawnmower as well was because I wanted to make sure there was no packaging left underneath or nothing actually stopping the blade turning or we didn't have to actually assemble the blade or anything like that now I'm happy it's all safe underneath we've got oil we've got fuel and all this handles attached nice and neatly what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up this pull car here to this handle we're going to take this lawnmower outside and try and start this brand new lawnmower up one last thing I want to show before we start this up is is actually this little hook here which is great it saves you having to bend down all the way down here to pull the lawnmower over but to connect this you must use this OPC which is an operator presence control lever at the top this handle if you like I'm going to hold that and just slowly pull it so there's no chance of the mower starting pull it really slowly just to make sure and I'm going to pull it past where I need it to go and I can release the handle and then what I want to do is I'm just going to hook this in here like this and the reason you pull it past it is so when you let go of it you obviously you've got a bit of spring tension and I'm going to get myself a, a socket or a spanner and I'm just going to tighten that up and you should never really need to remove that now and it's much better having it there because when you start the lawnmower up you've always got the actual handle at this height to start it up rather than leaning right down here You can see using a degree of common sense as well. Just tighten that up, make sure you don't go too far and you start bending the handle. And make sure you've got everything nice and lined up. The idea of tightening it up is so this actual pull cord can't actually fall back out of this hole and retract all the way in. So it only takes a few seconds to do and you'll only have to do this once as well. This mount fill lawnmower that I've received has come with a spark plug already built in so you don't need to attach anything like that. The air filter's all there, I've just had a quick look at that. So we've got oil in the right place, we've got some fuel in it, we've got a spark plug attached I'm happy that it's safe underneath and I'm happy that these handles are assembled properly I've even seen people assemble these when I've picked them up to repair for profit with a handle upside down believe it or not with it down looped around here and people holding onto the bottom of it so I've seen all sorts of weird and wonderful things but I'm happy that this is assembled safely we're going to take this outside and we'll try and start this brand new Mountfield lawnmower up Can you get me a Kit Kat? No. Why don't I get a Kit Kat? Why? Because you're trying to lose weight, are you? I have lost some weight, aren't I? Yeah. Look, I've got a Kit Kat. Yeah. Oh, that looks nice as well. Mm -hmm. Where do they make Kit Kats? Yep. Where? Where do they make Kit Kats? Nestle. Where's Nestle? Uh, in the town in New York. Correct. One last thing, as Colombo would have said, is we haven't actually connected this part to the grass box now. Again, this has come mostly assembled, but to actually finish assembling this, Everything goes from the inside out, that's the easiest way to describe it. You pull all these parts through like this and everything hooks from the inside to the outside. A little bit fiddly to do and I have actually had one of these before and I've actually had to bet new grass box for things. Obviously it's going to be a little bit tight because it's brand new. Let's just try and hook all this over. And once this is in position you should never need to do this again. And I'll try this side. You can see there, how it pushes over. Make sure it's nice and secure. This side should do the same as well. And push that over. And it has to be tight because obviously you don't want this coming off ever again, really. So we'll get those two parts in position. And everything goes as I've said from inside out. So I must make sure. I grab hold of this part here and I hook this over the top here like this. I need some good strong fingers for this bit and get that hooked over the top of there. And 
like that eventually you get there just need to be a little bit uh, have a little bit of patience with that you can see how everything went from the inside to the outside so you've got a nice seal here so when you're cutting you're not getting anything blowing through any gaps or anything like that so the last thing I'm going to show you before we start this up is how to fit the grass box so I've got you David you can come around here and show you this can't I if you come mm. around this side I can show all of you and everybody who's bought one of these lawnmowers how this clips on this has actually got a, a little handle on here you can use which is really nice you don't get that on many of the old ones, that's quite a nice feature so you can actually lift that up. You can see these plastic catches here, that's where your actual grass box just drops onto there and you can close that deflector, this is a grass box deflector and that's everything assembled. So finally we get to attempt to start this lawnmower, I've not tried to start it yet and if you've watched my channel or subscribed to it before you'll know that I actually do these things kind of live. So even though this is a new lawnmower, I don't actually know if this is going to start. So you're going to see first hand if this lawnmower starts and runs. We've got oil, we've got fuel, we've got a spark plug. We know the underneath safe, the handles are on tight. We've connected up the grass box. So just before I start this up, there's a playlist coming up when this lawnmower is running just after it's finished. And I'm going to actually link to the next part of this video series, which will be my actual review of this lawnmower when I've used it. But for now, I'm going to start this lawnmower up hopefully it'll start and run there's no primer on these lawnmowers so I'm going to pull the lever at the top and simply pull this over and it should start and I'm going to just lift it up at the back and demonstrate hopefully that the self drive works as well so no primer and please if you want a review of this video there will be a link under this video and in the top right hand corner shortly of where you can watch that so let's try and start this lawnmower up and let's see if it runs so there's no primer I've had a good look around You've got an automatic choke system on this lawnmower. So if I pull this lever at the top, which is the operator control, this actually moves this part here and it just releases the brake. So I'm going to pull that and let's pull this lawnmower over. So if you look in the top right hand corner of your screen now you will see a video I'm going to film over the next few weeks and I'm going to review this lawnmower. There will be a card popping up for that video now and there's also a link to that video in the description and at the end of this video. So that was exactly first hand how it was. It was assemble it, put the oil in, put the fuel in and with one pull this lawnmower as you would hope or expect started up first pull. Started up really easy, really easy to pull over as well and a lot of that is because these valves are nicely set up as well with this lawnmower being new and nothing's worn um, nice easy to pull over and the um, self drive is not too hard to pull what I mean by that is these cables lift up nice and easy so kind of easy they are to move brand new cables and everything so lovely uh, start to this lawnmower and I'm going to use this over the next few weeks I'm going to take it out onto some wasteland and cut quite a big area of grass we'll probably put the mulching plug on the back and test things like that in the next video but this is a Mountfield ST170 overhead valve 166cc engine probably going to be referred to in the future as well as now as time goes by as a Mountfield 481 or an S481 the PD once again stands for power drive but the actual model of the lawnmower is on this service ticket at the back here is an MP1504SQ and you will find that as I showed earlier with the service certificate and the actual uh, owner manual of the book this here on the back and I'll do all this on the review video this just tells you when the grass box is full so any questions about assembling one of these Mountfield S481s I'm going to call it that leave me a comment in the comments section and just tell me exactly what you thought of the video as well I can I'm quite thick skinned so you can if you didn't like it you can say that as well that's fine but this is a great lawnmower I'm absolutely thrilled that Mountfield have sent it to me to review and actually kind of set up from a customer perspective as well really impressed with the build quality of this as well which I'll, I'll again cover in the review 
bought a lovely looking lawnmower and I'm thrilled as part of the 10,000 subscriber special to be filming these videos. So if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so.